I just wanna know what it looks like to love people, you know. I wanna, I wanna know that Jesus, who goes to where the broken people are, you know. In the silence, you're the voice I hear. God, everyone is welcome with open arms, even robots. Like it or loathe it, ChatGBT is part of society and now part of the congregation. As Germany's churches experience a drop in numbers of pastors, this church in the Bavarian town of Fuert has the answer by using artificial intelligence. During service, this avatar preached to more than 300 people for mass. But can we really commune with robots? I was pleasantly surprised at how well it worked, but one thing I definitely missed, of course, was simply emotionality. Um, it's it was exciting, interesting, but for me it was too monotonous. The avatar spoke too quickly, sometimes you couldn't really think in your head during the service. It wasn't personal enough. So, in this church, worshippers are no longer inspired by the words of a preacher. And while some may say this is sacrilegious, the theologian behind it insists this is the future of worship. I would say 98% comes from the machine, generally speaking. And what we're going to see is an effort of us as human beings staying out of the church service. The 40-minute service saw the bot writing the sermon, prayers and even accompanying music. Intrigued and filled with anticipation, churchgoers queued for an hour to get front pew seats and find out just how it works. I told the artificial intelligence, we are at the church congress, you are a preacher. And the motto is, now is the time, what would a church service look like? And then it spits out a rough framework first. And then you say, okay, now why don't you do this introduction? And then she writes this introduction. And that goes on and on. You end up with a pretty solid church service, I would say. Whether you're a believer or not, the use of AI arguably brings services into the 21st century, allowing them to become more accessible and inclusive. But there's certainly no doubt it takes practice what you preach to a whole new level. Artificial intelligence, AI, the technology that allows a computer to think like a human. And it's everywhere you look. Online shopping, virtual assistants like Siri and Alexa. Welcome to the Church of England. As every major global faith is discussing its relationship with AI, we want to find out if it will transform religion. This Buddhist temple is more than 400 years old. And inside is a robot. It's designed to look like Canon, the goddess of mercy. It's called Minda. It's neither man nor woman. It's made of aluminium. Its hands, shoulders and face are covered in silicone. 
to resemble human skin. Monk Penshogoto thinks this robot can teach people the true essence of Buddhism. These university students have come to see Minda for the first time. A whole sermon delivered by a robot. But not everyone felt at ease with it. Here in Poland, Catholicism is the predominant faith. Gabriele Trovato has been building this for the past year, and it's almost ready. Its name is Santo. Gabriele says this is the first ever Catholic robot. It was clear to me last year during the lockdown when uh, many people started to complain they couldn't go to church. So in this sense, uh, a machine like Santo can give a hand. Are you proud of Santo? Yes, it's kind of. It's my son. <laughs> it's my baby. Santo is programmed with 2,000 years of knowledge about the Catholic faith. He's ready to meet worshippers for the first time. My name is Santo. What brings you here on this beautiful day? Santo, is there a heaven? It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for someone rich to enter the kingdom of God. So he wouldn't answer my question directly about whether there is a heaven, but he did reply with a verse of the Bible that I thought was quite relevant. Dzień dobry, Santo. Nasze bliskie, które są w niebie. What did you make of it? Byłam sceptycznie tak nastawiona do robota, że nie do końca miałam rację, że czasami nam pomaga swoje myślenie skierować na właściwe tory. I think it is impressive. It's a bit like uh, Catholic Alexa. Do you think that it gave you a satisfying answer? Well, I think that's the problem with artificial intelligence, that sometimes those answers are very vague. You're not asking where the closest restaurant is. You're asking about spiritual things. So he's helping you finding the own answer. But not everyone is sold on Santo. Would you? <laughs> he's stressed. <laughs> he knows we're talking about him. People here have mixed feelings about the robot. Most of them said they prefer a human priest, but they were surprisingly open-minded. One of them said anything that brings you closer to God is a good thing. I think it makes religion maybe more accessible, more integrated into everyday life rather than being this separate thing that you have to go seek out. It's more, it's seeking you. She's been trying it out on her family. Have you done the Robo Rabbi challenge? I did, I did. Um, I actually signed up along with my grandma. And my favorite one um, was, it, it challenged me to turn my phone off for an hour, which for me is very difficult. Now that I've done it, I can definitely see um, the value and I could see, you know, tagging friends on social media to participate and pass it along. So could an algorithm and a rabbi work together? We created it because we were really interested in using AI for good, so it helps people be their best selves rather than using AI to like make money online. So would you like to see how it works? Sure, let's try. And this is your first challenge, to talk to a person today that you would normally not talk to. 
very nice, uh, very nice challenge. I think an AI could be an equal, and it could work with a human rabbi as an equal rather than a tool, but you don't think that? I'm sure not. You're sure, okay. What did you make of RoboRabbi? It's a very good thing to use technology to improve the spirituality, to help people to do good things. We, we bless in that. Aren't you afraid you might be out of a job? No, this is for sure not. A robot will never replace a rabbi because he has no soul. Could AI be dangerous for religion? A big danger in the AI is if the AI is becoming crazy and this one of the biggest danger, the machine is controlling the human and the religion. I don't think it's what God wants. So what we found, talking to people from different faiths, different countries, different continents, is that AI can enrich religion as long as we don't let it replace interaction with humans. But is there a danger that people could place too much faith in artificial intelligence? Or even that science fiction becomes reality and we start worshipping machines? How about this? Uh, an AI priest. Could you imagine? In the US, an AI priest, that's right, an AI priest <laughs> has been shut down after going rogue. He began taking confessions like a real priest and suggested a baby could be baptized in Gatorade. <laughs> Who are you? I am Justin. Are you a real person? I am an artificial intelligence program to provide information and answer questions about Catholicism. Catholic Answers, a Catholic advocacy organization, runs Catholic.com, priding themselves on using new school tech for an old school religion. Christopher Check is the president of Catholic Answers. People have questions about Catholicism, you have the answers. We do. We do. And we've had them for uh, over 40 years. So it shouldn't be a surprise that the AI boom caught their eye. I'm a huge proponent of using technology for good, uh, and I think AI has a lot of promise. It's okay to be skeptical. Um, in fact, that's a good thing. I'm skeptical, but I do think there's, there are some really good applications for this technology, and I'm excited about what it can do when it's used for good, good end. They decided to build a Catholic chatbot with a persona, think PlayStation 2 graphics, and place it in a bucolic Italian setting. He was christened Father Justin. The church teaches that Christ is truly present in the Eucharist, not just symbolically or metaphorically. By the use of this technology, we were going to be able to reach many more people than one of our apologists or one of our staff members is, is able to do. Should a politician who is pro-choice be allowed to accept communion? The church teaches that life begins at conception and that abortion is a grave sin. Therefore, Promoting policies that allow abortion can be seen as cooperating in this sin. However, the decision to deny communion is typically left to the individual bishop or priest. Uh, that's a no perfect answer. That, yeah. that, that, that is exactly what we want him to do. In April, Father Justin went live. Controversy soon followed. AI is infecting Christianity and it wants you to get baptized in Gatorade. So after it was released, someone used it and Justin told them that it would be acceptable to use Gatorade uh, in a baptism. Correct. That isn't correct. It, it, uh, you're right, for, it is not correct. Right? He, he did find that answer at what we would have regarded to be a respectable source. Um, uh, we have since corrected that, and we've owned it, and he will not repeat that error. There was one criticism they acted on quickly, that an AI shouldn't be referred to like a priest, Father Justin was downgraded to just Justin. We realized this is now, the priest character is now interfering what we want to do with this platform, and we changed it instantly. In fact, I think, well, it took about an hour. AI is here, and uh, we have two choices. We can stick our head in the sand and pretend it's not here, that it has no application in spreading the faith. I don't believe that's true. It does. and by using a device like this and testing it, we're going to find out how best to use AI to spread the gospel.
son un camino para llegar a Dios. Because every religion is a way to arrive at God. Es un solo Dios. Y no son idiomas, caminos, lenguas para llegar a Dios. There's only one God, and each of us is a language, so to speak, in order to uh, arrive at God. Algunos esquí, algunos musulmanos, algunos hindú, algunos cristianos, son diversos caminos. There, there are different paths. Understood. It's not an offense against the Pope to tell him when he's made a mistake. Salvation alone comes through Jesus Christ. There's only one name under heaven in which we are saved, and that is Jesus Christ. Today, we're gonna to be talking to Father Gerald Murray. Pope Francis doubles down saying diversity of religious identities is a gift of God. Hmm. All right, we're gonna weigh into that. Controversial statements being made in Singapore by His Holiness Pope Francis. Many are confused by it, but here to weigh in on that is Father Gerald Murray. Where do you stand? What did you think about the Singapore comments in particular? Yeah, the Singapore comments should never have been made because it's not true. Uh, all religions are not paths to God. All religions, if you wanna use, uh, make a generalized statement, all religions reflect a human effort to find God uh, but the path to God is what God gives mankind so that mankind can in fact find him. So pagan struggling in darkness, which ends up inventing false gods, is not a way to God. It's a way uh, basically of self-worship. You know, people worship powers and, and the, the sun and the moon and all these sorts of things. Uh, this is not a path to God. This is a path into paganism. I just want to know what it looks like to love people, you know. I want to I wanna know that Jesus who goes to where the broken people are, you know. In the sight, you're the voice I hear.